Hello everyone, welcome to What If Decca Had the Quirk True Justice with Winter Soldier Movie. Before we start please go support Solness taking over for writing that awesome fanfic. What if Izuku got a quirk that let him protect what he loved? What if that quirk resembled his personality? What can he do with this quirk? Can he still become a hero? Is he going to be accepted? Description of Characters Name, Izuka Midoriya Age, 14 years old Height, 5 feet 10 normal slash 6 feet 1 activating quirk Weight, 70 kilograms normal slash 90 activating quirk Quirk, Justice Description of Quirk It allows the user to always make the right decision Boosts the user's bravery, confidence, charm, luck, physical abilities and intelligence He also has a small healing factor that can grow stronger. Likes food, training, work, music and to sing, real people. Dislikes, villains, bullies, fake people. Name, Toru Hagakure. Age, 14 years old. Height, 5 feet 6. Weight, 45 kilograms. Quirk, invisibility. Description of Quirk, she is invisible to everyone. Only she is invisible, not her clothes. She cannot turn off her invisibility. Likes ice cream, romance, friends, boys, spying. Dislikes villains, bullies, her brother. Name Inko Midoriya. Age 37 years old. Height 5 feet 7. Weight 60 kilograms. Quirk weak, telekinesis. Description of Quirk. She can pull small objects towards herself. Likes her son. Everything Izuka likes, handsome men, helping. Dislikes, ugly men, everything Izuka dislikes. Name, Bucky Barnes. Age, 39 years old. Height, 6 feet. Weight, 85 kilograms. Quirk, Winter Soldier. Description of Quirk, is able to survive extremely cold weather. Boosts physical abilities. Weak against hot weather and weapons. He also has a metal arm that can form into different melee weapons, like swords or knives. That is not part of his quirk though. Likes, everything cold, friends, training, helping. Dislikes, everything hot, villains, bullies, weak people. Justice the Quirk Izuka Midoriya is a four-year-old boy, but a weird one. For some strange reason, he always gets angry when someone else is being hurt in any way possible. It doesn't even have to be people he knows. He gets angry and tries to defend them, but he can't. Why? He doesn't have the power to do so at least, that's what everyone thought. He was sitting in a sandbox playing by himself. He had forest green hair, freckles, emerald green eyes, and an under-the-average body. He was minding his own business when he suddenly heard a small cry for help and a loud and angry voice. Don't you go around and talk shit about me. He recognized the voice as Katsuki Bakugo, his childhood friend turned bully. The small boy looked up to see Katsuki and his two minions standing over a seemingly invisible girl. B but I I I D didn't. They double you were LL lying, she replied. I trust them more than you, disabled heir. Katsuki shouted and loaded his fist to explode the girl. Without even thinking, Izuka ran up to Katsuki and hit him in the side sending him flying into a tree before he could harm the girl even more. His two minions peed their pants of the power Izuku showed. They managed to run away, leaving Katsuki alone against Izuku. Katsuki was beaten badly and tried to get up, but he was unable to do to Izuku pinning him against the tree with one hand on his collarbone. Katsuki was terrified. What is it, Katsuki? Lost your words? Katsuki was even more terrified once Izuku said to him. The aura that Izuka was giving off was enough for anyone to be scared, but the way he spoke and the fact Izuka called him Katsuki instead of his nickname Kakan made it a hundred times scarier. Please don't hurt me I promise to not hurt her or you again. Katsuki screamed in fear. That's what I wanted to hear. Izuka said and let Katsuki down. Now get out of here. Izuka said and waved Katsuki away. Katsuki ran home crying. Izuka turned around and noticed the floating clothes. He ran over to them and asked, Are you okay? Why, yeah? Thank you so much. I really owe you. 
My name is Toru Hagakure, and I can't even describe how thankful I am for you saving me. Toru said bowing. Oh, it was nothing. I mean that's what heroes are supposed to do, right? Izuka said scratching his neck. Oh, and my name is Izuka Midoriya. I hope we can be good friends. Me too, but if I may ask, what is your quirk? It seemed really powerful, being able to beat Katsuki like that. Toru said. To be completely honest, I don't even know what that was. I know I have a quirk, it's called justice, but it only lets me know what is the right thing to do, not give me immense speed and strength. Izuka replied. Do you think that your quirk can have developed to your body and lack of power? Toru asked. That doesn't sound too far-fetched. Actually, I'll go to the doctor right away. How about we meet here tomorrow and I'll tell you the results? Izuku suggested. That sounds great, Izuku. And good luck with your quirk, Toru said. Bye, Toru, I'll hopefully see you tomorrow, Izuku said before he ran off. Goodbye, Izuku. Izuku ran inside his house and called for his mom. Mom, I think my quirk has developed. Can we go to the doctor to check it out? His mom was caught off guard of the small child bursting into the kitchen. Sure, Izuku. But let's do it tomorrow. It's going to be dark outside soon, Inko replied. But I want to check it now. I think I used it today when I saved someone, Izuka said. Okay, okay, let me get dressed and we'll go there now, Inko said in defeat. At the doctor's office. I'm happy to say your son has a stronger quirk than we first thought, the doctor told the Midorias. Izuka beamed with happiness. Then, doctor, what are the differences? Inko asked. As you know, his last version of the quirk was just a strong meaning of what's right and what's wrong. The doctor started and Inko nodded. Well, now it seems that whenever he uses his quirk he gets a boost in bravery, confidence, physical abilities, and intelligence. It also seems that he has a small healing quirk that can develop over time. However, it seems like there is a permanent boost in charm and luck. The sad part about the charm boost is that it can become too strong to resist. That means he can distract anyone from what they were previously doing, and he'll be swarmed by people that have weak minds. The doctor said and ultimately worried Inko. Is there any way to turn the charm off, so he doesn't have such a hard childhood? She asked. Sadly, no. But it can only affect people that have completely human bodies and if Izuku has seen their face. The doctor said and Inko calmed down a little bit. Inko then got up from her chair and picked up a drowsy Izuku. Thank you, doctor, and before we leave is there possible to get a paper with all the confirmation of Izuku's quirk so he can look at it tomorrow? Inko asked. That's perfectly fine. The doctor replied and gave her a paper with all the information on. Inko and Izuku then took their leave. Izuku was now sleeping peacefully, but Inko sighed and prayed for him to have a normal life. The next day Izuku woke up and asked his mom for information about his quirk because he didn't really hear that much at the doctor's office. She took out the paper about his quirk and told him about everything except the charm because she thought it would be better for him to not know about it. Oh, how wrong she was gets hit by Inko OWWW why did you hit me? Don't spoil anything idiot. Oh yeah? Sorry, but now let's move on. Izuka thought it was a really cool quirk. It even seemed stronger than Katsuki's. Izuka met up with Toru later that day, and he told her about the changes of his quirk. She did also believe it was stronger than Katsuki's. The two kids then talked a bit about themselves and quickly became best friends. They then went around the playground and played in happiness of each other's company for the rest of the day. Winter Soldier Introduction After Izuka had gotten used to his quirk he had started training it every day. He was with Toru every day until they were seven years old. At that time, Toru had to move due to her dad getting a new job. But before they said goodbye, they promised each other to meet again at the best hero school, UA. Time skip. Izuku is now 14 years old. He isn't getting bullied anymore, but he is being ignored by most people. His only friend he has had was Toru, but she had to move. However, since Izuku has trained every single day since she left, he now has a very ripped body and isn't very bad looking. He has gotten rid of his habit of stuttering and is no longer so shy against other people. Izuku is sitting in his chair with his head lowered. The class is talking with each other, 
and that's when the teacher walks in. Okay, class I was going to hand out these papers that let you choose your career path, but you're all just going to the hero course, he announces, and everyone starts showing off their quirks except for Izuku and Katsuki. Hey, teach don't lump me in the same bag as these losers here, Katsuki says loudly, and the class responds with angry words and people. Ah, yes, you were going to U.A., right Katsuki? The whole class shut up after the teacher had said that. Yeah, shut up like the extras you are. I'm the smartest and strongest person in this stupid school, and I'll be the first from this trash school to get to you, Dada, Katsuki said. But the teacher then said something that sent shivers down Izuku's spine, not because he was scared of the others. He just doesn't like attention. Yeah, Izuku, you also want to go to Yue. The class then started debating if he was able to do it, and to Izuku's surprise, most of them thought he could do it. Katsuki however, did not like the news. He turned around and slammed his hand on Izuku's desk. At least that was what he tried to do but Izuku moved Katsuki's hand right before it made contact on Izuku's desk so it moved past his desk and Katsuki fell face first on his desk, knocking him out. The whole class laughed at Katsuki. Even the teacher giggled a little bit. But he quickly regained his composure and said, Izuku, I expect you to not do that again and please take Katsuki to the nurse. Izuku got up from his chair and slung Katsuki over his shoulder and walked to the nurse's office. There he put Katsuki down on a bed and then left to go back to class. When he got back, the class was already silent, and he just sat down and minded his own business, waiting for the bell to ring and freeing him from this hellhole. Finally the bell rung across the whole school and almost everyone was cheering, because this was the last day for them after all. Izuku was alone in the classroom and packing his stuff when he suddenly heard the door be pushed open. Without him even being able to turn around he heard a small explosion and quickly squatted down. He was barely able to dodge the attack from a certain blonde-haired boy that went flying into the wall. Katsuki got up, angry as a bull in a room covered with red things. Deku don't think of applying to you Dada, he shouted. But I have to, Katsuki. I promised her and you won't stop me. Izuka replied. Oh, please. Your quirk isn't nearly as good as mine. Sometimes I wish you could just jump off the school roof. That way you would never be able to stand in my way again, you useless pebble. Katsuki said and sparked some explosions in his hands. He then stormed out and left Izuka with his own thoughts. What is Katsuki thinking? Does he know he just suggested suicide? That could give him years in prison. Yeah, cause it's not like the things he's already done isn't enough for that. I really wish he could just care about himself and leave me alone. Izuku was lost in thought as he was walking home. So lost that he didn't notice a villain climbing up from the sewers and sneaking up to him. It was already too late when Izuku snapped out of his trance and felt a weird, big slime capturing him and start to suffocate him. Don't worry, kid. It'll only take a few seconds and then the suffering will stop. Izuka felt himself losing consciousness when suddenly he got freed from the sludge. Why do you have to follow me, why? Was the last thing Izuka heard before he passed out. Winter Soldier POV Damn I let this kid get attacked by a villain, and the worst part is that he now is unconscious I need to save this kid like a true hero I thought. I then charged at the villain with my metal arm now and a blade. Once I was close enough I sliced the villain, but the blade only went straight through him. The sludge villain punched me straight in the face, sending me back to the kid. I can't give up now I thought, as I kept charging the villain. After a couple of tries I heard a faint wind behind me and saw that the kid was waking up. Should I need to finish this now I thought, so I would bring no harm to the kid. I tried one last time but like all the other times, I was just sent back to the kid again. He looked at me weirdly, like I was stupid or something. He got up and said, Why don't you just hit him in the only solid part of his body, his eye? I was dumbfounded. The fact I hadn't thought about that earlier is still a mystery to me. But I did as the kid suggested and charged the villain one last time and hit him in the eye. The villain screamed in agony and fled the scene, leaving a man in only his underwear. It seemed like the villain had taken a hostage before it started its rampage. I quickly picked up the man, said thanks to the kid, and left for the nearest hospital to get the man checked up on. Narrator POV Izuku was in awe. He hadn't thought about it much before the hero left, 
But that was the hero, Winter Soldier the number three hero in Japan. He had moved to Japan for only some months but was still one of the best heroes. He was really happy that he had met the Winter Soldier. He started walking home and talking about the possibility of them meeting again, and how cool the Winter Soldier was. That was when he suddenly heard an explosion from downtown and feared the worst. Winter Soldier's Apprentice Last Chapter We cut off the story just when Izuka heard an explosion from downtown and he feared the worst. On to this chapter. Izuka was running towards the chaos. He could hear panic screams and more explosions every minute. He was running as fast as he could, and that was really fast. When he reached the scene, he could see a handful of pro heroes trying to capture a villain. However, it wasn't just any villain. It was the villain that had tried to attack Izuka earlier. But what really disturbed Izuka was the person that the villain had taken hostage. The person had blonde, spiky hair, and red eyes. It was Katsuki. His eyes were as red as usual, but there was an emotion in them that Izuka hadn't seen in ten years, fear. Katsuki was afraid for his life, and the fact that his quirk is used to harm people and cause damage. The heroes didn't do anything. They were standing still and waiting for a hero with a more suitable quirk to show up. That was when Izuka saw another hero join the scene and charge the villain with his metal arm. He dodged all the attacks from the villain and sliced one of his eyes. The villain screamed in agony again and started punching aimlessly. He was blinded. The hero, however, was thinking of what to do. He had nothing that was able to capture the villain. And was definitely not suited for this type of situation. He was losing stamina really fast due to the fire everywhere. After all, he wasn't good against heat and everybody knew that. That was the one weakness of the Winter Soldier. The other heroes were still just standing and watching the fight take place. Izuku was disgusted by them. They weren't real heroes, and they were definitely not someone Izuku would trust his life with. The Winter Soldier was the only real hero around, and that was the reason he was the number three hero. Even with his weakness, he charged into battle, risking his life just to save a kid he didn't even know. Izuku was, at the time, really inspired by the Winter Soldier's bravery and heroism. Without even thinking, he charged into battle alongside the hero. Winter Soldier saw that Izuku was heading towards him and the villain, and he didn't try to stop him. He smiled and turned back to the blinded villain. Let's do this, kid, he said and charged the villain. He drew the villain's attention by shouting and making noise. The villain, unknown to the other person trying to take him down, made an opening. Izuku saw the opening and grabbed a metal pipe. He sliced through the villain, separating Katsuki from the main body. He quickly grabbed the unconscious Katsuki and ran back to the heroes. He handed Katsuki to the heroes, and before the heroes could stop him, he ran back into battle. The slime villain noticed that he didn't have a hostage anymore and was full of rage. He charged the Winter Soldier, but Winter Soldier just dodged his attack. Izuki used the opening left by the distracted villain and sliced the villain into many small pieces with the metal pipe. Before the villain could get back together a third hero came into the battle. It was the new hero Kamui Woods, and he scooped up all the pieces of the villain with his branches. The crowd was clapping and cheering for the trio that saved the day. After the battle, Izuku was surprised by the number of people that congratulated him and gave him compliments on his actions. There was also a lot of ladies and young women that blushed by the handsomeness of the 14-year-old. However, the heroes that ended up not doing anything was jealous of the 14-year-old and started to scold him about not using his quirk in public and leaving the job for the heroes. Izuku was also overwhelmed by newscaster and reporters to ask him questions, some a little too personal. There was one hero that saw the kid struggling with all the attention so he walked over to all the people surrounding the kid. Ahem, he fake coughed and the people turned to him. First off, he started scolding the heroes. You talk about him leaving the job to you, but you didn't do anything. You also let a kid and a hero with a great disability to heat lead the battle against a fairly strong villain. You also let a kid do your job for you. He then turned to the news people. Give him some space. He isn't even a young adult by the looks of it, and he is definitely tired from the fight. Let him rest and wait a few years, and then you can talk to him. Because by that time, 
I'm sure this kid is going to be one of the next big heroes. The news people left the scene and the heroes also left after giving apologies to Izuku for scolding him for no good reason. Right now Izuku is walking home in peace, not noticing many ladies give him lustful looks. Once he was in an empty street he heard someone running towards him. Izuku got ready in a fighting stance, but luckily for him, it was someone he knew fairly well. It was the Winter Soldier. Hey kid! I wanted to talk to you about something, but first off, what's your name? He asked. Uh, my name is Izuku Midoriya. What was it you wanted to talk about? Izuku replied, surprised that the number three hero wanted to talk with him. Well, it's nice to meet you, young Midoriya. The Winter Soldier started. I want to train you. Izuku was surprised the number three hero wanted to train him. What? Why do you want to train me, sir? He asked. You showed great heroism back there, and that reminded me of an old friend of mine. You may have heard about him, but onwards. You showed those heroes what it means to be a real hero, and for that, I'm going to help you achieve your goal. The Winter Soldier said, Oh, and my name is Bucky Barnes, but you can just call me Buck. Now Azuka even knew the name of a great hero. I accept your offer and I am grateful you think so highly of me. What training are we going to do? He asked. Meet me tomorrow at Dagoba Beach at 6 o'clock in the morning. There we will start and complete your training so you can become a hero. Buck said and left without a reply from Izuku. Izuku then walked home and couldn't wait for tomorrow. Just think about it. He is able to train with one of the greatest heroes in the world. Training After Izuku had gone home and to sleep he couldn't wait for the next day when he would train with the Winter Soldier himself. And the fact that he knew his name made it even more special. Bucky Barnes, the name of a hero, mentor and maybe something more. Izuku woke up at 5.50 and became a little pale. There was no way he would get to Dagoba in time. Even though it felt hopeless, he quickly got dressed in his white Nike shirt, black trousers, and green and black Nike shoes. He then took a bit of a toast and ran out the door running to the beach. When he arrived, he saw Bucky already there. Buck, he shouted. Bucky looked towards the boy running towards him. Hey, young Midoriya. Ready to start our training? Bucky asked once Izuku had gotten to him. Yeah, Izuku replied with determination flowing through his whole body. He was not going to screw this up. Bucky Barnes, the winter soldier, had put his trust in him and promised to train him. Okay, the first thing you're going to do for your training is to get rid of all this trash. Bucky said as he moved out of the way so Izuku could see the whole beach full of trash. Then it hit him. This was the Goba Beach, the beach that was completely destroyed due to all the illegal dumping happening on it. Izuku's sweat dropped and asked, Okay, but how long do you expect me to finish this? I mean, it's only ten months until the UA entrance exam. Bucky looked at Izuku with a smirk and replied, I expect you to get rid of it all in at least four months without your quirk. Izuku just looked shocked at Bucky. How was he going to get rid of all this without his quirk? In four months too? To be honest, he felt like nothing without his quirk. That's why he always had it activated, except when he was sleeping of course. Izuku was still in shock until Bucky asked him. So, when are you going to start? Right now, Izuku replied and deactivated his quirk. He felt himself get smaller, weaker and nothing. Bucky just looked at Izuku in complete shock as the young, tall, handsome, strong boy in front of him disappeared and a skinny, small, plain-looking, weak boy appeared before him. Wow, I thought you quirk was something else than this. Bucky stated, pointing at Izuku. I'm as sorry I if I I'd disappointed why why you? Izuku said with a small, weak voice. His personality changed too. Now I don't even know if he's able to finish it in time. Bucky thought. W what I I is I at Mr. W, soldier? Izuka asked, looking at the man that was now in deep thought. Bucky snapped out of it and said, Actually, Izuku, you'll be cleaning one-third of the beach before the exam. I think that suits you better without your quirk. Bucky replied taking another glance at the boy in front of him. Izuka felt a stinging pain in his chest after Bucky said that. He didn't think Izuka was good enough. That was when the kid known as Izuka Midoriya was going to change. Without his quirk or not, he would clean the whole beach and get rid of his bad habits. 
No. I'm going to clean the whole beach. Even without my quirk. Izuka stated looking at Bucky with determination in his eyes. Bucky seemed to glow up. That's right, young Midori, I believe in you. Now go beyond your limits. Break them like they are nothing, and prevail with the victory in your hands. Bucky inspired as Izuku started his next months of hell. After one month, Izuku had managed to clean one-tenth of the beach already. He had already begun to gain muscles but was also building up his confidence. He had decided to never use his quirk before he was done with the training. After three months, Bucky couldn't believe it. Izuku had already cleaned one-third of the beach. Bucky thought he would need ten months with it, but no, he only used three. This was when people began to show up and try and find the one cleaning the beach. When they saw a small kid carrying small fridges like they were nothing, and dragging large metal containers along the beach they were shocked. One of them was more shook than the rest though. That someone was a certain brown-haired girl. Oh, competition? After seven months, after all this time, Izuku was finally done. Now he had developed in all the right parts. He was now much taller than before. He had gotten a much better look. His face had actually changed for the better after lifting so many heavy things and making faces no one could describe. His body had formed into that of someone that would have trained normally for years. He had a six-pack, entering the eight-pack territory, and the muscles on his arms and legs were definitely not the average size. It was early in the morning and Izuka was already done with cleaning the whole beach. Bucky had just arrived and saw Izuka standing on top of a large mountain of trash. Oh. My. Goodness, Bucky shouted, getting the attention of Izuku. Izuka looked at Bucky drowsily, but happily, before closing his eyes. Up there he could see the beautiful sunrise. It almost reminded him of the beach and himself. Becoming more beautiful, and better every moment that passed. He could also feel the small breeze of the wind hit his body soothing and relaxing him. The wind went through his hair, messing with it until it was at its normal state. He then looked down and saw Bucky also looking at the sun rising above the horizon far away. Izuka jumped down and landed beside him, before sitting down, resting his tired and exhausted body. You know, Midoriya, I'm really proud of you. You made such great improvement in just seven months. So much changed about you. You're not even activating your quirk, but you still look as strong as ever. Bucky said, still looking at the sunrise. Yeah, about that. I want to show you what I look like when I activate my quirk. Izuka said, looking at Bucky. Okay? I mean, it couldn't have hanged that much, could it? Bucky looked at Izuka confused. I'll just show you. Izuka replied. He then started activating his quirk. The small boy in front of Bucky then slowly turned into something unexplainable. Izuka grew from being five feet eight into being six foot tall. He also gained more muscle on his already well-built body. Now he actually had an eight-pack, and it was rock hard. His hair changed from being black with green highlights to be black with dark green highlights. It also went from its normally crazy and untamable hair to lay perfectly on one side. His eyes became more colorful and his freckles multiplied, giving him this adorable look. So, how do I look? Izuku broke the silence. I don't know what to say so much change from only a quirk. Bucky replied. Yeah, I know. I found out about it after I was just done cleaning and then randomly looked at a broken part of a mirror while I accidentally activated it. Izuku said. But you have so many positive things with this quirk. What is your quirk again? Bucky asked. I called it justice. It enhances my bravery, confidence, physical abilities, and intelligence. I also have a small healing factor that can grow stronger. It's probably at a normal right now due to the training. Izuka replied. Wow, that's a really powerful quirk. Now I have no doubt that you'll get into learning. Bucky said. What can I say? I learn from the best. Izuka complimented Bucky. Bucky grabbed Izuka by the neck and locked him in a solid grip. You're too nice. He said laughing as he rubbed Izuka's hair a little too rough for Izuka's matter. They then started sparring. Bucky won because of experience, but it was a close fight. They then did that several times, until Bucky had to start going all out. At that time people had started gathering around the beach, 
wondering why a kid was sparring with the three hero. They mumbled between each other who this kid was. Not only had he cleaned the beach by himself, but now he's training with a pro hero. However, there was one certain girl in the crowd that felt her heart skip a beat every time she could see the boy's face clearly. The crowd was now loud enough to be heard by the two people training. Bucky took a quick glance over at them and then started fighting again. However, Izuka was not ready for the fighting to start just so fast. When he had looked at the crowd he noticed a certain girl with brown hair dropping down to her shoulders. She had a round, but cute face. She looked like your average high school girl, but she had definitely caught Izuka's eye. Izuka had looked at her for too long, because now she had noticed his stare too. She looked back at him and blushed. Bucky noticed the starring and smirked before he kneed Izuku in the gut and then uppercut him into the sand, gaining the victory. Izuku was now laying there, looking at the sky, exhausted of the hard training. Bucky went over to him and sat down beside him. You shouldn't get distracted, even if it's by a cute girl, he said. Izuku felt his cheeks warm up a little just by thinking of her, but he quickly shrugged it off. Are we going to train like this every day until the exam? I mean, it's almost three months until it starts. Izuka asked, changing the subject. No. Sadly, I have some stuff to organize before that time comes. I could recommend you to UA if you want me to. Bucky suggested. Nah, I feel like that's cheating. I want to earn my place into UA. Izuka replied. And there we have it, folks, that's why I chose you, Izuku. You have a pure heart, and I love that. I'm sure you're going to get into UA anyways, Bucky said, locking Izuku in the same grip as when he finished cleaning. The crowd, now understanding the entertaining sparring was over, got their stuff and left. Everyone had already gone home, even Bucky was taking his leave, except a certain green-haired boy and a certain brown-haired girl. Izuku noticed her and walked over to her. Hello, my name is Izuku Midoriya. Nice to meet you he said and stretched out his hand in a polite manner. The girl blushed and covered her face with one hand before greeting Izuku with the other. And nice tt to m meet yum midoriya. M-i-n-n name i is o achiko y urarika. She stuttered. Izuku looked at her. Hey urarika. Would you be my friend? He asked. She just nodded as she then left him alone with his thoughts. Entrance Exam Day of the Entrance Exam Today was the day. It was finally time to take the entrance exam so Izuku could get into UA. He was currently standing in front of the huge gate that was the entrance to the prestigious hero school, UA. People were inside the gates and most of them were just chilling and talking to each other. Izuku stood in awe at the big school as he wasn't activating his quirk. The reason being that he didn't want to be thought of as an adult just yet. Another thing is that he wanted to be himself the first time he came here. And, when he's not activating his quirk, he's a huge hero fan and he's even written several hero journals with facts about certain heroes' quirk, but also the strengths and weaknesses of those quirks. He left his awestruck state behind him and started walking into Yui with a load of confidence. That was until a voice behind him made him jump in surprise. Deku, Izuka turned around to see a fuming Bakugo heading towards him. What the buck do you think you're doing here? Izuku was annoyed by this encounter and therefore resorted to the most logical reply. I'm here to take the entrance exam, just like you. Although if you pass or not is the real question here. Several people around tensed up a bit by the comment made by Izuku. Uh, Just because you're activating your quirk right now doesn't mean you can go around and talk the talk but not walk the walk. Izuku only got more annoyed that Bakugo thought he was activating his quirk. Actually, Bakugo, I'm not activating my quirk right now. This is my normal look now, Izuka stated. How right like the pebble you are, you can never get that physique without a quirk. Bakugo was in disbelief that Izuka wasn't using his quirk. Izuka simply walked over to Bakugo and looked down on him as he was a few centimeters taller. Wanna see? He asked as Bakugo just nodded nervously. Suddenly, Izuka started growing taller. More muscles were seen on his body and his outfit now was a bit too small for him. His face changed into a young adult's, and he took a more intimidating look. Bakugo was literally shaking in his boots at the sight of the man in front of him. What is it, Kakin? Lost your words? 
Izuku had just mentioned what he said all those years ago, and that made Bakugo almost piss his pants. But it also had a positive reaction towards one person that was nearby. It's him, it's really him. After intimidating Bakugo until he almost deflated, Izuku was proud of himself, but he wouldn't let it get to his head. He simply turned around, turned off his quirk, and walked inside the school while getting looks from many bypassers. After the written exam, Izuku was currently on the way to the auditorium where someone would go through the whole practical exam. He was still getting looks from other people but they didn't bother him much. However, as he was walking in the hallway towards the auditorium, he noticed a girl with brown hair that was about to fall face first on the floor. Izuku would not let something happen, so he sprinted towards her without the usage of his quirk and slid under her to lighten the impact. She had closed her eyes and when she didn't fall on the cold, flat floor, but rather a more warmer, softer thing she opened her eyes and saw that she was laying on top of Izuka Midoriya, the boy that cleaned the beach and had caught her eye. She quickly got up and apologized to Izuka while rapidly bowing and with a huge blush on her face. I am SS so SSS sorry, I Izuku I, I didn't mean to to fall on you. Izuku just brushed himself off and got up. No worries Yurarika. After all, I shouldn't let a pretty girl get dirty. He gave her a heartwarming smile as her blush intensified and she almost fell again. This time, Izuku just got a hold on her and balanced her until she could stand again. But hey, we don't want to be too late for the orientation. Let's go. Izuku took her hand and made his way to the auditorium with a blushing Achiko Yurarika behind him. What he didn't notice was a certain girl that saw the whole thing. Why does my heart hurt when I see him with her? Izuku got to the auditorium rather quickly and sat down beside Yurarika just in time for the orientation. Hey, I'm present Mike, can I get a loud, yeah? The crowd was silent except Izuku who let out a loud, yeah, many people chuckled by Izuku's shouting, including Izuku who just sat down while smiling, but present Mike seemed genuinely happy. Good to see that at least someone's excited. Anyway, I'll be guiding you through the general knowledge I have of this exam. From there, present Mike went on by talking about how the exam consisted of three robots to disable, the one-pointers, the two-pointers, and the three-pointers, all of which were designed to stand against physical combat quirks. The points from all robots you would defeat was your final score, and you needed at least 40 to get into UA. During most of the presentation, Izuku was talking to Yurarika about how her quirk would help her in a fight against the robots and giving her tips and advice so she would know what to do. Present Mike was almost done with his presentation when a blue-haired kid with glasses stood up and asked, Mr. Present Mike on the pamphlet here, there is a picture of four robots when you have only talked about three. If this is a mistake then I think you should be ashamed of themselves and you, with the green and black hair. Izuka looked up to see the boy with glasses pointing at him. You've been chit-chatting with her the whole time and that has disturbed the people around you. If this is all just a joke to you, then you should leave. Izuku was a bit annoyed by this guy as he had clearly just thrown out some false statements. Izuku stood up and cleared his throat before he answered the guy. Dude, present Mike was just about to talk about the last robot. Plus it also says here in the pamphlet that the robot is worth zero points and is considered an obstacle. For your second statement, I was helping her by guiding her and giving her tips to how she could use her quirk against the robots. Why? Because if you haven't noticed... This practical exam is based on students with physically strong quirks, which is something she doesn't have. Now, if you would just nicely sit down and shut up until the presentation is over, I think everyone here would like that. Izuku finished by giving him a fake smile and the classic head tilt. The boy with glasses could do nothing but sit down and quietly. Okay, now that that's over and participant number 342 explained the last robot, you are free to get to the replica cities. Now remember, go beyond. Present Mike stopped. Plus Ultra, the crowd shouted and quickly left the auditorium to go to the changing rooms. Izuka quickly changed into his training gear and strapped his utility belt around his waist. It consisted of a strong material that held most of his weapons like different types of grenades, throwing knives, ammo, and a gun was located on his left. However, he also wore different types of armor, as he has been recommended by Bucky to wear at the exam. There were shin pages on his knees and elbows while hard leather pads were covering his arms and legs. 
He wore a bulletproof vest under his tracksuit, and it was made as light as possible. The most crucial part about his costume was the two swords on his back. They were tightly strapped to scabbards on his back and across. Many people were giving him weird looks from the choice of weaponry. When he got there, he started stretching and calming down as more and more students arrived and stood outside the giant city walls. He noticed Urarika inside the crowd and was on his way toward her, but suddenly he heard present Mike shout, Stay art. Without a second thought, he dashed off towards the city gates and left the other participants in dust at his speed. Immediately, he ran into a group of robots and began drawing his swords as he was nearing them. One robot threw a punch, but Izuka elegantly jumped over it and moved his right katana in the air gracefully and did a dramatic flip. Once he landed, the head of the robot hit the ground and shortly after, the whole robot followed. The other participants could only look in awe as Izuka continued his slaughter of the group of robots, taking down each and every one of them with one blow. What are you waiting for? Follow that kid. The others were snapped out of their trance and started sprinting into the city and getting some points themselves. Izuka just kept running around the city and slicing his way through all competition. He was like a river, casually flowing in peace and complete silence. He was like an assassin, moving with complete silence, but still dealing blows with the maximum precision. It was clear to say that more than just the other participants were impressed by the boy. In UA Observation Room We sure have an exciting bunch of new students this year, said a hero named Snipe. Yes, indeed. And I believe this is the most promising pack out of all the last few years. There are very many that show they have the skills to get into UA. Thirteen remarked. That is good and all, but the real test is yet to come. It is when we see the true person these kids really are. Acute, adorable, fantastic, super good, nice, handsome, mouse bear thing he said. I like the kid with spiky blonde hair. He's got the strength the true hero needs, Vlad said. The one I'm taking a liking to is the kid with black and green hair. He's got both technique and strength to take on hundreds of these robots. And he's handsome as Buck. Midnight exclaimed as she literally drooled over Izuku. Please don't drag him into one of your schemes, Midnight. I don't want my student to lose his virginity to you. All the teachers turned around to see Winter Soldier standing in the doorway with his arms folded. Windy, Midnight ran towards Winter Soldier who just sidestepped out of her way. She ended up tripping and falling face first on the floor. If he really is your student then he might be the strongest in the whole bunch of this year. Niza said. Oh, he's strong all right. He made even me go all out against him. I won't be surprised if he is able to beat me now. Just looking at him now makes me proud. I definitely hit the jackpot with him. Winter Soldier looked at Isaac and then at his score. 101, 103, 106 it kept going up as Azuka continued to slay robot after robot. Then, when they got a close-up shot on Azuku, Winter Soldier noticed something that shocked him. Wait, he's not using his quirk? He exclaimed as his mouth was wide agape. What? Midnight, who was now looking at the screen after her fall, looked at the boy in disbelief. How do you know? Thirteen asked. The last time I saw him use his quirk was three days ago. If he was using his quirk, he would be even faster, stronger. He would completely demolish the competition. Not to mention that he would be taller, more muscular, and his hair and eyes would be a darker green. He would also have a much more adult look and a more intimidating posture. You can clearly see that his tracksuit is a little too big for him. That was probably so it wouldn't rip when he uses his quirk. Winter Soldier was both surprised and shocked by Izuku's progress, as he wouldn't even be as big as he is without his quirk now than if he was activating it ten months ago. What no one noticed was the smirk that Midnight gave when she heard the part about Izuku looking more adult-like. That is truly remarkable, said Nizu and hovered his hand over a red button. But let's see what he does when he faces this. Nizu pressed the button, and suddenly a loud crash was heard in the city. Izuku Midoriya. He might be the one, thought a certain blonde-haired one hero. Back to the city. Izuka had just sliced a robot in half when the ground started shaking and a loud crash could be heard nearby. Izuka looked towards the sound and saw a robot taller than the buildings. 
one of the buildings were almost completely destroyed and a lot of rubble and debris had fallen on the road. Many people were screaming and running away from the humongous robot. He put his swords back in the scabbards and turned around. He was about to run too, but that was when he heard a faint call for help. He looked over to where the pieces of the building had fallen and saw several people trapped under the rubble. All of them were unconscious except a certain brown-haired girl. Without hesitation, Izuku ran towards the people trapped under the rubble and activated his quirk while he was running. He reached them in an instant and started lifting the rubble off of them. He lifted away some rubble and got out five people. He put two on his back and held the rest bridal style. He crouched down and got ready to sprint. He launched forward and was out of the danger zone rather quickly. He saw the guy with glasses and called out to him, glasses. Luckily he turned around and saw Izuka putting down five unconscious people. Take care of them. Without any more waste of time, he ran back to the site. He saw that only the girl with brown hair and some gloves were left. As he was about to do the same with her as he did with the rest, he saw the giant robot's foot on its way towards them. However, he did not stop, as he quickly removed the rubble and grabbed Urarika and was about to run off. Instead of leaving, Urarika stopped him and said, There's still someone under the rubble. She pointed at the gloves that were on the ground and it was now Izuku realized it was an invisible person. He knew he didn't have enough time to clear the rubble, grab her, and get away unharmed so he instead put down Urarika and said, Use your quirk on the rubble and drag her out of here. I'll hold the robot long enough until you can escape. Even though Urarika's leg was broken, she had to do everything she could to save the invisible person. She quickly got to work and started lifting off the rubble when suddenly, the sun was blocked. Izuka had planted his swords firmly in the ground and was now only waiting for the impact of the foot. He looked up only to duck and grab onto the swords as the foot blocked the sun and pressed down on him. His body was screaming to stop what he was doing, but his mind could not falter from his mission, save everyone. Meanwhile, Izuka was trying his hardest to stand up to the robot. Urarika was struggling with the rocks that had trapped the invisible person. The robot was pressing down on them, but Izuka managed to keep it up with the swords and his quirk. He had both hands on the handle of the swords and was pushing his back upwards to try and push the foot away. The foot didn't even budge. It just stayed there as it became harder and harder to keep up every second. He managed to open his eyes and saw that Urarika was struggling because she had exhausted herself earlier. Urarika take the grenade in the left pocket number four. Urarika looked up and saw Izuku struggling so she quickly grabbed his utility belt and took out a grenade located on his left side. Press the button and place it under the rubble it's a push grenade it won't hurt them. Urarika did as requested and pressed the button on top of the grenade. She then threw it under the rubble and seconds later, it exploded and moved the rubble away enough for Urarika to drag the person out of there. Toru POV The last thing I remembered was that the ground had started shaking and I heard a loud crash. I couldn't even see what was the source before many large stones fell on me and knocked me out. Now I woke up to a light push and opened my eyes to see I was outside but it was unusually dark. I couldn't really see much except a brown-haired girl that was despitely trying to drag me out of the dark place. I looked to my left, and there was a young man with two swords in the ground and pushing upwards as hard as he could. When I took a closer look at the two, I could see they were desperate so I thought of why. I looked up and saw what looked like the underside of a giant metal foot. I didn't need anything else to get myself going as I got on my feet and crawled out of the dark place while dragging the brown-haired girl with me. When we got aside I got a better grasp on the situation and to be honest, it terrified me. I could see a gigantic robot that was trying to press its foot down on the young man under it. Izuka you have to get out of there. The girl cut the brown hair called out to the man ANS he just looked back at us with a sad smile. At least I could save them. I could hear the man mutter under his breath. And then I looked in horror as the foot pushed his swords deeper in the ground and he let go of standing against it. No one's POV. As the old P, present mixed voice rang across the air as Izuka could feel the pressure from the foot leave. He fell down, out of breath and completely exhausted as the foot retracted to the robot and the sun shone upon him. He deactivated his quirk and closed his eyes feeling proud of himself that he was at least able to save the ones that were trapped under the rubble. 
Even if he wouldn't be able to get away himself, he was proud. After waiting and just resting for a while, he decided to get up and out of UA as he was just tired and not really injured. He pulled his swords out of the ground and put them on his back as he walked over to Urarika and the invisible person. Are you two okay? He asked and got the attention of them. They both nodded and a blush could be seen on Urarika's face. T thank you for saving me, Izuku, she said. Oh, it was nothing. I mean, that's what heroes are supposed to do, right? He scratched his neck and gave a heartwarming smile. It's him, but he's got her, and now he's so good looking. I definitely don't have a chance, Toru thought. Oh, my bad. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Izuka Midoriya. What's your name? He asked and looked where he thought the eyes of the invisible person was. Um, my name is... Toru was about to reply to his question but was interrupted by an old lady walking fast towards them. Oh my god! What happened to you, sweetie? She was referring to Urarika as she saw the condition her leg was in. Oh, um, it got trapped under some rubble and it snapped. Urarika replied. Oh, those idiots. I told them this was going to happen, but did they listen? Of course not. She finished by kissing Urarika on the forehead, healing her broken leg. Izuka had seen what was happening only to turn back and see that the invisible person he thought was a girl was gone. Hmm, weird, she was just here. Oh well, can't do anything about it now. I hope I can see her again, though. She reminded me of someone. Izuka turned to Urarika and together they walked out of the replica city talking about what they thought of the exam. What Izuka didn't know was that the invisible girl, Toru, had only taken off her gloves and shoes and ran into the nearest alleyway. I could definitely not face him now. Even though I want to, he wouldn't even remember me. I'm not even sure if he would accept. She WSS sad that they wouldn't get back to knowing each other, but deep down she knew he would live a happy life even without her. At least, that's what she thought. Accepted. Izuku woke up to the ringing noise of his alarm clock. He tiredly shut it off and grabbed his phone to see a new message from an unknown number. Hey, Izuku, it's me, Urarika. Just checking in on you and making sure you got my number. Oh, hey, Urarika. Thanks for checking in on me. I'm doing fine. How about you? Me. Izuku got out of bed and put on his training clothes before going downstairs and making breakfast for himself. He was quickly done with his breakfast and looked at the clock. Seeing that it already was 6.43, he decided to make his way outside. Izuku put on his earphones before setting on his Spotify playlist. Premium, of course. Izuku went for his daily morning run of 13 kilometers to keep himself in shape. When he got home... His phone buzzed and he took it up from his pocket to see that he had gotten a message from Urarika. Yura, hey, I was wondering if you had gotten your acceptation letter from Yue yet? No, unfortunately not. I really hope I get accepted though. Me. Yura, okay, I'm sure you'll make it though. Thanks, I'm sure you'll get in too. Me. Izuka put his phone down before taking a shower and started working out in his room. This routine went on for days until one day. His mom burst into his room while he was doing some shirtless push-ups. Izuku, it's here. The letter is here. Inko said his name with a little lust because of his quirk but quickly lost it. Okay, mom. I'll finish this and look at it afterward. Just put it on my desk. Inko obliged and quickly got out of the room and went downstairs to do motherly things. He quickly finished his push-ups before getting up and ripping the letter in two. Out fell a small piece of paper and a disc. Without Izuka even touching it, the disc turned on and out of it came a hologram with Winter Soldier standing in front of some lame green screen. Hey, young Midoriya. I'm here to tell you that you made it into UA in Class 1A. Your writing test was extraordinary with everything right, and in the practical, you shocked all the teachers with both your skills and heroism. You got 111 villain points in the exam, easily gaining you first place. Winter Soldier said before All Might came onto the screen and literally pushed Bucky away. But there was also a different part to the exam. All Might started with a booming voice. You could also gain hero points by helping those in need. The teachers decided to give you 90 hero points due to you saving those trapped under the rubble, but also exchanging your life for theirs. 
That is what we look for when we hold such exams. This time it was All Might's turn to be pushed away, but only so half of him was still showing on the screen. Izuka couldn't help but giggle a little by their antics. That gives you a total of 201 points. Winter Soldier started. Now, Izuka Midoriya, welcome to your hero academia. Both heroes held out their hand before the hologram shut off. Izuka was about to pick up the paper, but the hologram suddenly turned back on. P.S. Meet me at Dagoba Beach the day before UA at dawn. And then it was the time for the screen to shut off for good. Now, Izuka had the paper in his hands as he quickly looked over it to see a map, a list of students, and other school-related information. Suddenly, his phone buzzed. Yura, OMG, Izuka I made it into UA, how about you? Oh me? Yeah, I made it too. Which class are you in? Me. Yura, I'm in class 1A. Please tell me you're in that too. Yes, I am. It would only make sense for first place to be in 1A. Me? Yura, yes that means we'll see each other more. How many points did you get? I got 57 villain points and 20 hero points. Oh, that's a good score. I got 201 points in total. Me. Yura, 201? That has to be the record well done. I don't know, but it has to be up there with the best. Me. Izuku and Yuraraka kept chatting with each other until late in the afternoon. Izuka had really hit the jackpot with her. It was the day before the first day at Yue, and Izuku was almost done with his morning run. It was currently sunrise as he ran past the Goba beach on his way to meet up with Bucky. Izuka could see three figures standing in the sand in the middle of the beach. One had a metal arm and looked really toned, while the other was skinny with blonde hair. The last one was impossible to not notice since she wore a very revealing outfit while her long, beautiful hair. Izuku went up to them and greeted Bucky. Hey, Bucky. You wanted me here. He gave Bucky a high five before turning to the two others. Just by one look, Izuku knew the lady was the 18-plus hero Midnight, but he had no clue who the other was. Midnight, nice to meet you. He gave Midnight a handshake, but she dragged him into a hug and pressed her breasts on his chest to seduce him. Just call me Nimu, big boy. Izuka blushed a little and due to the tiny reaction, Midnight gave up and pouted by his discomfort. The two others only laughed at her. Izuku turned to the skinny man only to get a closer look on him. He looked like a skeleton version of All Might. And who might you be? Izuku asked. Oh, simple, I'm All Might. Izuku's jaw dropped in the sand as it was now Bucky and Namuri's turn to laugh. Wait, you're trying to tell me that you're All Might. Izuku was dumbfounded so the man decided to reveal himself. Suddenly, smoke started to come off his body as he quickly transformed into a large, muscular man, also known as All Might. Oh my god! It's a pleasure to meet you, All Might. Izuka couldn't contain himself from his nice, cinnamon roll, hero-loving side. All Might quickly turned back to the skinny man he was before. Yes, nice to meet you too, young Midoriya. Congrats on getting into UA, All Might said. Thanks. But did you two really have to fight over who was going to say it to me? All Might and Bucky only flinched over the question. Well, you destroyed the previous records in the exam, so All Might wanted to be the one to say it due to your awesome results. I wanted to tell you because you're my apprentice. Izuka thought of it, and it made sense in the end. Okay, but why did you want to talk with me today? He asked. All Might and I want to train you more seriously in the coming three years as you could be the inheritor of All Might's quirk. Bucky threw the facts straight at Izuku, and he was blown away. Wait, you can transfer your quirk? Izuku asked as he looked at All Might with a shocked look. Yes, it's called One for All, and I need you to inherit it before it disappears. You see, it's a stockpile quirk that grows stronger over time. It has been transferred through generations for the only purpose to help the citizens of this world. Now I'm looking for a successor so that I can retire due to my injury. All Might stopped his little teaching to show Izuka the scar in his left abdomen. Izuka cringes at it due to how bad it looked. Yeah, pretty nasty. Due to this scar, I can only be in my hero form for five hours per day. If it's not transferred in the future, one for all will disappear and I cannot let that happen. 
In the future I will deem you worthy or unworthy of gaining my quirk. But until that time, you have to build up your body to the max so you can control this quirk. All Might finished as Izuku just nodded. Yeah, I'll do it All Might, but I want to inherit it at the last second, since I want to be able to climb my way to the top without any more help. Is that okay? He asked. I understand, young Midoriya, and I fully stand behind you on your decision. Just know that I will be watching you further through the coming months. All Might replied. He then looked at his non-existent watch and said, Well, I have to leave now. I look forward to be working with you all. All Might then turned into his hero form and jumped away. Bucky also had to go because of some final preparations for something, so he quickly bolted his way out of there, leaving Izuku alone with a lustful midnight. She threw herself at him and locked her arms around his neck. Yeah, no thank you. Escaping out of her grip, Izuku took off and safely made it home. 1A. It was the first day of school and right now, Izuku is making his way to Yue. On the train, he sees Yuraraka sitting in one of the seats and ultimately makes his way over to her. Hey, Yuraraka, he says and smiles at her. A small blush can be seen on her face as she replies. H. Hey, Izuku. Izuku sits down beside her and sparks up a conversation that continues all the way to Yue. The two now stand outside of the gates of Yue. Be sure to not trip this time. Izuku jokes and Yuraraka just replies with a small pout. They quickly make their way to Class 1A as Izuku had memorized the map he got earlier. He opens the door and is immediately welcomed by the blue-haired kid with glasses yelling at none other than RMC's rival, Katsuki Bakugo. You should not have your feet on the table do you not have any respect for the school? The glasses boy asked. Whoa, chill down there, dude. You seem like you have a bucking stick up your ass. Where are you from anyways? Katsuki replied. That is no way to talk to your fellow classmate and my name is Tenya Ida. I'm from semi-private academy. The blue-haired kid known as Ida replied. Oh, a bucking elite? Well, at least that gives me a reason to blow your ass up. Bakugo threatened as he sparked some explosions in his hands. Ida could only look in horror as he slowly walked away from the maniac. Izuku took the seat behind Bakugo, and Yuraraka sat behind him again. A weird thing was that Bakugo completely ignored Izuku instead of threatening him too. Izuku turned around in his seat and started chatting with Yuraraka. They kept chatting until Izuku felt a presence in the doorway and turned around to see a caterpillar. A man was inside the yellow sleeping bag and quickly finished his orange juice before zipping up the sleeping bag. He stepped out and started talking to the class. It took you more than ten seconds to calm down. Time is essential so we need to work on that. Anyway, put on your pea clothes and turn up outside in the field. You have five minutes. The class scrambled its way to each locker room. The boys in the boys' locker room and the girls to the girls. All the boys were in the locker room and changing into their pea clothes when a dude with red, spiky hair came up to Izuku. Hey dude, I couldn't help but notice that huge scar on your chest and all the other cuts on your upper body. What's up with that? Oh, I'm Ijiro Kurishima by the way. The red hair asked. My name is Izuku Midoriya. It's just that my sensei uses sharp weapons for me to have a more real experience. The one on my chest is when I tripped once and he ended up slashing my chest open. That hurt like a hitch. Izuku replied and smiled at the end to make the other guy sure that he was okay. That's so manly. Well, I hope we can get along well. Kurishima said. Yeah, me too, dude. Izuku finished changing and went out to the field where he ended up waiting for the rest of the class. When everyone was outside, the tired man started speaking. Okay, class, my name is Shoyuda Aizawa, but you may call me Sensei. I'm going to be your homeroom teacher in your three years here at UA. Today we'll go through eight quirk apprehension tests where you'll be able to use your quirks and tests you did in middle school. Aizawa then showed them a device and a ball before he called for Bakugo. Bakugo, you got second in the practical exam. Throw this ball as hard as you can while using your quirk. Bakugo walked in front of the class and took the ball from Aizawa before walking inside the circle where he would stand to make his shot. He reeled his arm back and threw it while making an explosion in his hand and yelling, D. The class only sweat dropped at his shout but quickly caught themselves. Aizawa's device beeped before he showed them what stood on it. 
703.4 meters? Most of the class yelled. These tests are made to rank you all in how much your quirk is useful. And if you come last in total, I'll expel you on the spot. Aizawa threatened the class and it worked quite well. However, Izuku was having none of that crap, so he decided that he would talk to his teacher after the tests. The test started fairly well for RMC, as he didn't use his quirk. Even though he was approximately quirkless for all the tests, he managed to claim top 5 for each one. In the 50 meter dash, he got 3.54 seconds, while Bakudo got 3.56. The one with the fastest time was Ida, with 3.46 seconds. In grip strength, he got 119 kilograms which was third after some strength enhancer quirk and a dude with six arms. He excelled in all body exercises with first in every single one, and also third in the long jump. Izuka's last test was the ball throw, and he was just about to throw it when Aizawa stopped him. Izuka was about to throw the ball when suddenly he felt his arm get trapped, and he looked back to see a weird bandage-type material wrap his hand in place. That was when he heard Aizawa's voice. Why have you not used your quirk yet? The class gasped at the reveal. I saw what you did in the practical exam. Even though you got first and saved those people, you would have died yourself if it wasn't an exam. If you're just going to give yourself up for someone else then I suggest you leave. You'll only be a liability in battle if you can't even save yourself. Aizawa said. If you don't use your quirk for this last test, I'll expel you, right here, right now. Aizawa finished in a demonic voice to scare Izuku to do his best. Aizawa let go off Izuku as he thought about the situation. He ended up on actually using his quirk on this last test. It couldn't hurt for only a small amount of time, right? He channeled his quirk throughout his entire body and felt himself change into his superior form. He could hear whispers coming from the class and he actually heard what some were saying. Why didn't he use his quirk earlier? He? First place? Please. OMG, why has he not used it when he's so handsome with it? He is sparkling in that form, not as much as moi though. Oh my god, those abs. Izuka felt the pea clothes sticking to his body very tightly although they were made to stretch. Izuka decided to ignore them and reeled his hand back. Just when he was about to throw the ball, he felt a surge of energy, confidence, and strength as he threw it as hard as he possibly could. S-M-A-S-H, he yelled as the ball left his hand and their sight as well. It took a few seconds, but Aizawa's device beeped at last. He looked at the score with wide eyes before showing it to the class. 2019.2 meters? The class yelled in disbelief. Izuku and Aizawa just shrugged it off before getting to the results. Aizawa showed them a hologram that showed each student's placement. Izuku searched for his name and was actually pleased by getting fourth place. At the bottom was a small kid with purple balls for hair. He cried his heart out before Aizawa revealed that he was only tricking them into doing their best, although it didn't work on everybody. He looked at Izuku with intensity as Izuku just sweat dropped. The class proceeded to go on with their day and went back to class. At the end of the day, the class had gotten to know each other surprisingly well and Izuku was now packing up his stuff before heading out of the classroom. He quickly made his way home with Uraraka by his side. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day. Bye.